to the entertaining Talking Sports. What is going on, football fans? Back at it with another New York Giants video. Before I jump into the video, just want to let everybody know I will be live tonight. Haven't done a Q&A with you guys in a bit quite frankly, because there hasn't been a ton to talk about. But, of course, we got major news in the division today with the Philadelphia Eagles. I was going to do one on Saturday anyway, but I figured with the news today, makes a lot of sense to talk to you guys how it could potentially impact the Giants in the draft and maybe even free agency. Um, and I'm going to have a couple of Giants YouTubers on there for that as well. So hopefully I see some of you guys for that. In addition to that, I do have a new sponsor on the channel that I'm very excited about that I'm going to jump into further detail at the end of this video if you guys would like to stick around. But really excited for the partnership with Faruqi and Faruqi. So stick around for that if you're interested. But I wanted to jump into the crux of the video, and that, of course, being the news that's come out over the last couple of days. It's all over Twitter that both the Chicago Bears and Detroit Lions are strongly considering using the franchise tag on both Kenny Galladay and Allen Robinson, two targets that New York Giants fans have been talking about for quite some time because, quite frankly, they are probably the two best wide receivers out there on the open market that would best fit what the New York Giants are looking to do. Of course, there's other prominent names like Juju Smith-Schuster, um, and Godwin. Those are probably the next two biggest names. They're more of slot guys, though, and not exterior threats, not to mention, um, and I'm going to have a video up on this probably in about a week where I predict where the top 50 or so free agents are going to end up in free agency. All reports are that Curtis Godwin more than likely will stay on with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, whether it's with an extension or via the franchise tag. And we'll have to wait and see if that, you know, is the case. As far as Juju Smith-Schuster goes, a lot of people point to that he has maybe some off-the-field problems. And again, he's more of a slot guy that I don't really think the New York Giants would look into. Now, by no means, I want to preface this by saying what I'm going to get into in this video. Am I saying this is likely um, or that it will happen? Um, other options that the New York Giants could very well look at in mid-tier options in free agency. I've gone over Curtis Samuel um, as well as Corey Davis. Samuel, of course, has ties to Gettleman, but he's not really a number one guy. I think most people feel that way. It would certainly help the wide receiver core, but you could certainly argue even if you were able to bring in either one of those two guys, you'd probably still want to address that wide receiver position early in the draft. If you were able to get a guy like Allen Robinson or Kenny Galladay, what it would do is it would give you the freedom to take somewhere, you know, a player somewhere else to fill in one of your needs, whether it's a edge rusher, whether it's a corner, whether it's bulking up the offensive line, or really going for a super wide receiver uh, core with that first round pick and taking the best player available. And we'll have to wait and see who may drop in our lap with that pick. But I wanted to get into the possibility of a tag and trade. Of course, if these players were to be tagged, that doesn't necessarily mean that we're coming that they're coming back to their teams. We've seen this numerous times, not necessarily at the wide receiver position. We've seen it at the edge rusher position. Last year, you had Yannick Ngakwe. The year before, I believe D. Ford was traded. Um, Jadavion Clowney was traded two years ago when he was tagged. And you see that more and more. The reason being, well, yes, you are compensated. If you lose one of these players with a third-round pick, if you retain them, <coughs> excuse me, on the tag, you could then bring that. You could then get more compensation than a third-round comp pick if you're able to trade them. And I'll get into what exactly I think they'd want potentially from the New York Giants and what I'd be willing to give up in a said tag and trade scenario, and why I think it could make sense for the Giants, and also why I actually think it's more likely that one of these guys could come in via a tag and trade than if they were just to hit the open market. But I'll get more into that before we go over some of the details about the uh, about the uh, the potential tag and trade. This came out from NBC Sports Edge Football, and it was for both Gallaudet and Robinson. I'm, I'm going to dig into Robinson. Bears could, uh, could tag and trade Allen Robinson, and then it went into further detail on Yahoo Sports. Bears receiver Allen Robinson, and keep in mind before I read more into this, um, reports had come out that Allen Robinson and the Bears were not really on the same page. They've not talked in quite some time, and it seemed as if Robinson was going to test free agency. Bears receiver Allen Robinson said last week that everything was on the table regarding the future. It's unclear whether everything in his mind included the Bears using the franchise tag on him and then trying to trade him. Tom Pelissero of NFL Media reports Robinson's rep uh, representation has not talked to the team about a long-term deal since September. Robinson is scheduled to hit free agency next month. Pelissero then later went on to say, that would certainly seem, seem to bring the franchise tag into play, Pelissero said. Whether it is the Bears uh, to try to do an extension, or whether it is setting up Robinson to play on the tag, or maybe even a tag and trade scenario. And then the question becomes, what would they potentially be looking for? 
in a tag and trade scenario. But I definitely think that's on the table. Now, I brought this um, table up when I was doing the Leonard Williams video talking about the potential to tag him and the decreased tag rate based on the salary cap going down. And that's the other thing we're going to talk about in this video. Word has come out that the floor used to be, at a bare minimum, the salary cap would be 175. Well, now that's since been increased. The floor, at a minimum, will be $180 million. Not meaning that that is what the number is, meaning that it will not be any lower than 180. So that is up by $5 million. This chart was based off the minimum salary cap of 175. So these figures are a little lower. But if the cap were to be 180 or potentially 185 or 190, these figures would be a little bit higher. But the tag for wide receiver based off the 175 would be $15.326 million if you look to the right. The 2020 figures were 17.865. That was based off $198 million. So figure if it was 180, it'd be a little closer to 16. And if it went upwards of 185, maybe you're starting to approach that $17 million mark. But it's still probably under market value for a wide receiver like Allen Robinson, who would probably expect to get, you know, in the... 18 to 20 million dollar range so the Giants could use that as an option now why would the franchise tag and trade be attractive to a team like the New York Giants well first we're going to go over the price second I'm going to then I'm going to go over why I think it's more likely even though it may not be super likely that the Giants could bring them in via this way than if the, than if they hit the open market the price for a tag and trade what I'd be willing to give up as a Giants fan I'm not giving up a first round pick because quite frankly I could draft a wide receiver at number 11 overall I think one of those top three guys will be there I would, however, very strongly think about giving up a second-round pick, and maybe you wouldn't agree with that, but here's my reasoning. If I were to give up a second-round pick, which would be around, I think it's like 43, 44, 45 range, if you bring them in, and let's just say worst-case scenario, even though I think the Giants would do everything in their power to extend them before the year started, um, you'll lose them the following year. You would then get a comp pick for them, which would be in the 95 range. So yes, you lose some draft capital there, but you also get him for a year to help build Daniel Jones with the ability and opportunity to extend him throughout the year. You also would have the ability and opportunity to franchise take him for a second time and then possibly trade him and try to get that draft compensation back. So I definitely think it's worth a one-year gamble to bring him in with the possibility of extending him. The other thing it does is it opens up the freedom to, one, extend your defensive players at free agency, and two, take the best available player in the first round. And it gives Daniel Jones that desperately needed number one option which, without really tying into your draft capital. Now, if, if another team would be willing to give up a first-round pick, Allen Robinson walks, Kenny Galladay walks, whichever player you want to insert into this exercise. But if you were able to get him on a tag and trade for a second round pick and maybe a player, you know, the first player I thought of was Evan Ingram, but then I said to myself, well, the Bears don't need a tight end, they drafted Cole Komet, the Lions don't need a tight end, they drafted TJ Hawkinson. But if there was a player that you could insert in there that may make sense if they wanted a little bit more than a second round pick, I'd be willing to listen. For a first round pick, absolutely not. Now, why would this give the Giants, in my opinion, a better opportunity, even though not a likely opportunity, to bring in a player like this if they were tagged? Well, for the simple reason Allen Robinson and Kenny Galladay wouldn't hit the open market. And then you could argue, well, they'd probably try to manipulate it in a way to go to a team that they'd want to go to. But that doesn't mean that said team would be willing to give up the price that the Bears may want. Um, you know, let's just say they wanted to go to the Dolphins. You know, just throw a team out there. If the Dolphins aren't willing to give up a second-round pick and the Giants are, I would think it would be much more likely they would trade him to the New York Giants. So that's why I think it becomes more likely. If they, if they were to hit the open market, I don't think they'd be knocking down the door uh, to play with a quarterback who threw 11 touchdowns uh, last year. So that's my line of thinking there. But in the end, if you ask me, I think it's more likely that we end up with a mid-tier option or don't even sign a free agent wide receiver at all um, and attack defense heavily and then go you know strong offense in the draft. But... This is something I wanted to talk about that I still think is on the table and is a possibility even if these players were to be tagged, which it looks like they probably will be, which I think makes sense for both of these franchises for the simple reason if you still decide to trade them before the year starts, you would probably get more than a compensation pick for either one of the two individuals. And if not, you just hold on to them and you get a compensation pick the following year, even if they were to hold out. Um... And normally, this is when I'd wrap up the video and I'd say, give me a little thumbs up. But in this video, I kind of just wanted to jump a little bit more into the new sponsor in the video. And if you're still watching, I appreciate all the support. And before I even get started and and, and talk about Faruqi and Faruqi, um, I, I wanted to say, give a huge thank you to all you guys that continue to support this channel. Because without you guys... I don't even get opportunities like this where people reach out to me and ask to be sponsors of the channel. And I've been reached out to 
by several people in the past, and I'll talk to them, and, you know, we, I don't connect. I, when I talked to Fruki and Fruki, the uh, personal injury lawyers, I, I felt like there was a good connection there. I felt like they bought into the channel. They've been longtime subscribers of the channel, huge Giants fans, and talked about the community. That was the main driving point, why they were so attracted to this channel, and they kind of want to bring that over to their platform. But they're great people um, from, from talking to them, getting to know them over the last couple of months, and I'm really excited to be partnered up with them. Um, but you guys are the main reason why they were attracted to this platform to begin with. So again, I want to give a major thank you to each and every one of you guys. In terms of what you guys may gain and benefit from it, we're talking about doing things in the future like meetups, bar meetups, um, potentially, you know, sponsored tailgates, things like that um, to help bring this community further uh, together. So I'm really looking forward to the partnership. It means a lot to me. It means a lot to the growth of this channel. And I wanted to make sure I let you guys know that you guys had a ton to do with it. Um, I'm always going to have this up in the top right corner. I'm never going to drive it home. Uh, we kind of agreed on that, that we want it to just be casual. Um, I always have it in the description and I'll always have it in the pinned comment. And if you guys want to check them out, you guys are all, all, always more than welcome to do it. If you guys have an injury, if you guys need, you know, need consultation, please check them out. Uh, they're based in New York City. A couple of things I want to let you guys know. They represent the people who have been hurt by the wrongdoing of others. They're headquartered in New York City and represent clients throughout New York. And they've been in business since 1995. So there you have it. Check them out. As always, guys, if you liked what you watched, please subscribe. Drop a comment. Maybe give me a little thumbs up. Cheers.